Father, we thank you and we give you praise because you are faithful. We thank you because you are too faithful to fail. You are not a man to lie. Neither are you the son of man to repent. You don't play with words. You don't joke with words. You don't do drama with words. When you are about to do it, you will speak it forth. When you have completed it, you will declare it. Father, we thank you because for what you have completed over this ministry, over, over the families of Kingdom Embassy Church, that we thank you because for what you have completed, you have declared it. And Lord, Father, we thank you for the hour of manifestation. We give you praise and we give you glory. Lord, as we go into your word, we ask that, Lord, you will grant us entrance into the mysteries and the revelations of your word in Jesus' name. The grace to key into what you have said so that we can become a prophetic beneficiary of your utterance. Grant us, Lord, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. We pray that, Lord, King of glory, you will declare your counsel over our lives, over our destiny, over our situation. And whatever is it contending with your grace, your glory, and your word, and your promise, and your covenant over your life, over our lives, we bow today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. I take authority over this atmosphere, every strange spirit, every spirit of buying and selling, all the emissaries from the pit of hell assigned to today's service, I bind you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. I bind you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. I use the word of God to bind you in Jesus' name. You will not prosper in your enterprise here today over the people of God in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we enthrone you here. Have your way. Take control. Glorify your name. I charge this atmosphere with the electricity of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I read from uh, the scriptures that the Lord gave us in regards to the theme for our seventh anniversary, Job 22. I'll start from verse 23. I'll read down to 30. I will be very quick. And so please, um, let's get to the book of Job. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. That is a conditional tense. Last week, I tried to uh, lay definitions of uh, lifting, of supernatural lifting, in order to build upon today's message. And then I'm quickly kind of uh, recapitulating uh, some of the things that were shared here uh, last week. It has a conditional tense, if you return, if you return. So if you fail to return, if you refuse to return, if you make up your mind not to return, you can be lifted up. It says, but if you return to the Almighty... This scripture is going to backsliders in the house. It's going to those who have lost their first love in the house. That if you return to the almighty God, thou shall be built up. And thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacle. Everything that can be called sin in your life. The Bible says, don't just Put it somewhere in your house. Put it far away. Put it far away from the tabernacles. Then shall thou lay up gold as dust and the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. Yes, the Almighty shall be thy defense. I pray today that heaven will defend you. Amen. I say heaven will defend you. The Almighty shall be thy defense and thou shalt have plenty of silver. For then shalt thou have thy delight in the Almighty and shall lift up thy face unto God. Thou shalt make thy prayers unto him and he shall hear thee and thou shalt pay thy vows. 
Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say, There is a lifting up. Uh, <laughs> only one person is catching that word. So when men are cast down, when men, I know, I know God has sent me to just only one person here today. And whosoever that person is, will start keen into the prophetic. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say, there is a lifting up. Amen. When men are cast down, when men are cast down, then shalt thou say, there is a lifting up. Amen. This kind of lifting provokes envy. <laughs> this guy it provokes envy when men when others are not making it when others are frustrated with life and with their job and with their economy when others cannot make both ends meet anymore then the sun of your destiny will rise from obscurity from nowhere you will rise up listen it is not it is not abnormality for you to stand out it is natural for you to stand out. Some people are afraid to stand out in life. They want to remain with the multitude because they don't want uh, enemies to run after them. They just want to play it safe. It is natural for you to stand out because this scripture is saying it is not by your effort or your strength that you will be lifted. The hand of the almighty God that pull Lazarus out of the grave will lift you up this year. I say that hand will lift you up this year. He shall deliver your, the island of the innocent and it the deliver, is delivered by the pureness of thy hands. I read Psalm 3 verse 3. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. I love that scriptures. That glory and the lifter of my head. That glory and the lifter of my head. For thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. That glory and the lifter of my head. I cry unto the Lord with my voice I cry unto the Lord with my voice and he heard me from his holy ease the glory and the lifter of my head the glory and the lifter of my head for thou O Lord are the shield for me, the glory and the lifter of my head. This is one mystery about the destiny and the lives of David. When you read about the stories of David, despite all the ups and downs of his life, despite his failures and his weaknesses and his vulnerabilities and his foolishness, there was something unique about him. He was always seeing God as the center of his life. David in the midst of all oppositions, he saw the hand of God lifting him up among his fellows. When he was written off, David was an underdog. David was a castaway. David was somebody that was not reckoned with in the family. The lot of David had been compromised in the family. As a matter of fact, David has no name and no position in the family. He was at the low level of life. Others were rising and shining and enjoying all, you know, all the things in the family. 
But David was deprived of the blessings of the family. But David had a relationship that no man understood. He had a relationship with the one who can lift up and no one can bring down. He had a relationship with one who can open and no one can shut. He had a relationship with one who can favor and no one can disfavor. And in the midst of the challenges of David, David saw the hand of God lifting him up out of the back of the desert, bringing him before those who said you will not rise in life. And God Almighty released grace upon David. David declared, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Those who say I will not rise in life, those who have written me off, those who are saying it is over with me, those who are saying nothing good can ever come out of my life anymore, those who have concluded over my destiny, that who prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy, thou anointest my head with oil. The rest of them, their heads were dry. But for me, you release the oil of gladness upon me, even above my fellows. And the Bible says, and my cup runneth over. Today, the God that lifted David is your God. He has sent me to you today to announce to you that from obscurity, you will witness a lifting. I said, from obscurity, you will witness a lifting. I don't care what is going on around you. There is a lifting coming your way. God has sent me as an assignment to somebody here. I don't know who you are. I am your prophet today. God has sent me as a prophet to declare to you that he is going to lift you above your fellows in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Whatever that is called limitation in your life, God has come to pull you out of limitation. Everything that has held you back, everything that has held you down, God is setting you free today. If you are that individual, shout hallelujah. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. <laughs> after the suffering of many years the pain and the agony of many years after the shame and the reproaches of many years David said but thou O oh Lord had a shield for me my glory my glory my glory the cloth you have is not your glory the house you live in is not your glory the car you ride is not your glory. The job that you have is not your glory. The certificate that you are proud of is not your glory. God is your glory. David said, I recognize that you are my glory. You are my glory. You are my shield. And you are the lift up of my head. God is saying in kingdom embassy, there is somebody in this ministry before this year is over, you will witness a supernatural lifting. I shared with us last week, when you are talking about supernatural, it's something that is beyond natural. So, when you are talking about the supernatural, the logic, the philosophy, the psychology, and the sociology of man cannot explain supernatural. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The mathematics of man cannot explain the supernatural. So it has nothing to do with your merit. When you are talking about the supernatural lifting, it's not the, it has nothing to do about your credentials. God, the God of heaven, the God that lifted David, he's going to lift you this year in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Please don't be tired of hearing a lifting. When Elijah, when the Lord spoke to him, there shall be rain. He told his servants, go and tell Ahab to prepare his chariots because now I can hear the sound of abundance of rain. I keep hearing it. I don't know who that person is. Something I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who the individual is in this ministry. And I keep hearing lifting, 
lifting, lifting, supernatural lifting. If you are that individual, receive it in Jesus' name. I have come to discover in life that there is a time for lifting. There is a time for lifting. Every man in the, on the face of the house has a time. There is a time for lifting. Weeping may endure for a night. There is a time for lifting. I don't know how long you have been waiting. There is a time for lifting. Like that impotent folk by the pool of Bethsaida. He had been waiting for several years. He said, I have been here for years and there is no help. The helper of the helpless is coming your way today. Uh, I said the helper of the helpless is coming to assist you in the mighty name of Jesus. There is time for lifting. Exodus chapter 3 verse 1. Exodus chapter 3 verse 1. To everything there is a season. Ah, this is your season. I said this is your season. Said to everything on the face of the earth there is a season. Yesterday during our, our minister's uh, uh, school of ministry in prayer I brought out a picture. I don't know where the picture is. I still need to keep that picture of our ministry uh, some years ago. You may not see it. Um, uh, it was when we were occupying uh, a particular place uh, on Franklin Road. I have just one or two or three or four or five of our members who were with us and who are here sitting now. And they will remember there was no classroom, just one single classroom for our children. At the back of the church, we had to set chairs. And that was where we were having our children. And there were about six or seven of them at that time in the children's ministry. That was a season. That was a season. Is that not so? The bathroom of the, the bathroom was joint bathroom. Female will use it, male will use it. No decency, no. And then it was almost at the center of the church. That was a season. You have a season in life that the devil cannot checkmate. <laughs> I said you have a season in life that the enemies have no answer to. They don't, there's something hidden about your life. There is a mystery about your season that the enemies have not discovered. <laughs> that is why you are one step above the enemies concerning God's plan over your life. The devil does not understand the total plan, the master plan of the almighty God over your life. He does not know it at all. He can have a glimpse, but he does not have the master plan. And even if at all he has an understanding of what God can do in your life. I share with us here sometimes ago, as I invited a brother to a church, and uh, he set up the computer in such a way that some files in my office, which I want to make available to some people that are working in the uh, engine room here, that they can read the files, but they cannot edit it. Am I making sense to anybody here? They call it, I'm not a tech savvy, I'm not really good, you know, it's just for, they call it read only. You try to delete, it's not going to delete. It was an administrative password. <laughs> Your destiny has a password. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you want to delete it and put it in the trash can. So, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Can you declare, your let me know who you are. Before I can permit you to delete this file, you must put your password there. There is a passcode over your destiny. <laughs> there is a passcode over your destiny. Many times the enemies have tried to delete your destiny. They have tried to re-edit your destiny. But they do not have the passcode. 
and they are helpless about it. I say over your destiny, the enemies are frustrated. If you believe that, shout hallelujah! <laughs> to everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. <laughs> he said there is a time to every purpose under heaven. The Bible says all things work together for good to them that love God and to those who are called according to his, his purpose. His purpose. And here the Bible is telling us that everything under heaven has a purpose. Say, and a time to every purpose under heaven. This is your season. I don't know about other people. This is your season. I, I don't know about the next person sitting beside you. I'm talking to you specifically. Don't look so far. I don't, it is you that God is talking to. I said this is your time. I said this is your season. The scriptures mention two strategic timings in the programs of God. Number one is called the set time. The set time. The set time. The set time. I don't know if you have done that before, but I have done it. And even, in fact, I do that also even on my cell phone. I have what I call a set time. Somebody tell me of a particular program. I don't want to forget. I'll go to my reminder and I'll put it there. Set time. And at that time, at that time, you see that thing keep ringing and ringing. Your destiny is ringing right now saying, this is the set time. I said, this is the set time. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. <laughs> God told Abraham in Genesis chapter 17 verse 21. Genesis 17 21. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac which Sarah shall bear unto thee when at the set time in the next year. He said this set time the enemy is helpless about it. I know you have looked for a shortcut to activate what I have said. I know you thought I was not going to be able to bring it to pass. You have brought Ishmael into the picture. Ishmael is not the one I'm talking about. Ishmael is not the son of covenant. I am going to give you a son. Believe it, don't believe it. There is a side time for it. When at that set time, that son will come. Isaac will come. I don't know who that individual is waiting for his own Isaac. Saying, God of heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when is my Isaac arriving? God has sent me to you at the set time. Isaac will come. In the name of Jesus. Anytime we try to help God, we set to for his permissive will. When it comes to the matter of the timing of the lives and destiny of man, you cannot help God. You cannot. You cannot. <laughs> Jehovah is the only one that has the final say. I said Jehovah is the only one that has the final say. And my Bible tells me forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. When something is settled, nothing can trouble it. Ah, concerning your set time, nothing can trouble it. Ah, I said concerning your set time, nothing will trouble it. It is settled forever. <laughs> oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. It is set. 
he decided forever, forever. My kiss, my kiss, my kiss. My kiss is settled in heaven. It is. Listen, one of the reasons I don't have sleepless night is because I know my case is settled in heaven. I say this with all humility. I say this. I don't have sleepless night over any issue in my life. I don't remember a particular time I'm not awake all the night thinking about what? Thinking about what? When God says his word over you, his promises over you, they are all settled. Except God has not spoken. I said except God has not spoken. If God has not spoken, you can be worried and troubled. But the moment God speaks, heavens and earth pay attention to the minutest detail of God's instruction over your life. Listen, listen. When God speaks, everything, everything, the constellation, everything begins to walk, to bring to pass what God has said concerning you. Listen, listen, listen. When God speaks, the earth responds to the word of God over your destiny. Wherever your benefactors are on the face of the earth, God has spoken. The psalmist says, once has God spoken, <laughs> I heard it twice. The word of God, like torrents of rain, proceed from God, from his throne of glory. Sounds like thunder. God spoke once, but I heard it twice. The power, power, the power to shift your situation. Power, power, the power to move you from the minimum to the maximum. Power, power, the power to pull you out of your hole. Power, power, the power that causes men to favor you without knowing the reason they are doing it. All power belongs unto God. Shout power. I'm talking about the set time, sir. I'm talking about the time that the devil has no solution to. I'm talking about the time that the enemies cannot checkmate. I'm talking about the time that the enemies are helpless against. This is your season. I said, this is your season. This is your season. I said, this is your season. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. <laughs> Have your seat. The Bible talks about the set time. The Bible also mentions the appointed time. Appointed time. Genesis chapter 18. Starting from verse 13. Genesis 18. Beginning from verse 13. And the Lord said unto Abraham, We have fought it, Sarah, love. Why don't you believe the prophet of God? I say, when you believe in God, you will be established. When you believe his prophet, you will prosper. That is the scripture. Some people are too religious to believe the message. They analyze it. They calculate it. They evaluate it. They dissect it. <laughs> say, why is Sarah laughing? So I say, I know it's for the next neighbor. They just got married just some two years ago. And they have not gotten babies. And that word is for them. For us, this is our destiny. He was, she was loving. So, where did, why, wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety be a child which I am old? Huh. Is 
anything too hard for the Lord. Ah. <laughs> it's anything. It's, it's to think. I know you are a thinker. You are a philosopher like Socrates. <laughs> you know we have Socrates in the church. <laughs> there was one man called, I think it's Nemo. He was the student of Socrates. Socrates was a philosopher. And so Nemo has enlisted himself in the school of Socrates. And then he began to teach him philosophies. Wisdom and thinking. He taught him to a point at which, is it Nemo, got confused. <laughs> the man got confused. He don't understand anything anymore. His brain began to turn. <laughs> Every battle of life that has got you to a, a junction of confusion. Today, I break the back of that battle over your destiny. <laughs> Appointed time. Say, is there anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return. Ah, ah. Say, at the time I have appointed a time for Sarah. And when I am ready to move, lift up your head, O ye gates. The time appointed is now. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door. The Lord gave the promise. The time appointed is now. Let the King of Glory come in to fulfill what He has said unto His child. And the kids, they said, "Whose voice are we hearing?" Say, "Who is the King of Glory?" Says the Lord. That is strong. The Lord that is strong. His voice is like many waters. He's the Lord that spoke to Jordan. Say you will not pass this boundary. Say that is the king of glory. The Lord is returning to bring to pass what he has said concerning you and nothing can stop him i say nothing can stop him i say nothing can stop him i'm speaking to you i said nothing can stop him i said nothing can stop him what he has said shall come to pass it shall come to pass and this is the appointed time <laughs> job said in job chapter 7 verse 1 Job chapter 7 verse 1. Is there not an appointed time to man upon the earth? Say so there is an appointed time to man upon the earth. There is an appointed time. And I have come to announce to you that your, that time we are talking about is now. I'm not talking about next year. I don't know. I'm not talking to everybody. There's somebody. I don't know who that person is. There's somebody. There's somebody. God is saying the time appointed is now. And I will convince you with these scriptures before we go into prayers. Ezekiel chapter 12 starting from verse 22. The book of Ezekiel chapter 12 beginning from verse 22. Son of man what is it that Proverb that ye have in the land of Israel saying the days are prolonged and every vision fill it. Tell them therefore the Lord asked me to tell you thus said the Lord God I will make this proverb to cease. The days will no longer be pronounced will be prolonged. I read Ezekiel 12 from 22. Thus said the Lord God, I will make this proverb to cease. The prophecy shall no longer be prolonged. I will make this, prophecy, uh, th th this proverb to cease. And they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say unto them, the days are at hand and the effect 
of every vision. I can see amen. amen. I can see amen. amen. God says, I give you a word. You are doubting my word because you are thinking the days are prolonged. He said, tell my people that proverb going forward shall cease. Because the days are at hand and the effect of every vision. I read from verse 24. For the Ezekiel 12, 24. For there shall be no more any vain vision, nor flattering divination within the house of Israel. Uh -uh. <laughs> For I am the Lord. I will speak. And at the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. Verse 25. For I am the Lord. I will speak a lifting to your life. I will speak a supernatural lifting to your destiny. And the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. Listen, it says, it shall be no more prolonged. <laughs> this is what God has sent me to tell you today. That it shall be no more prolonged. It shall be no more prolonged. I know you have been waiting. It shall no longer be prolonged. For in your days, will I, rebellious ask, will I say the word and I will perform it? Say the Lord God. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, verse 27, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, the vision that is yet is for many days to come. And he prophesied of the times that are afar off. Verse 28. Therefore, say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged anymore. <laughs> yeah, that person is catching it. There shall none of my words be prolonged anymore. But the word which I have spoken shall be done said the Lord God. A call to prayers. Let's rise up on our feet. As the children of Israel were led into captivity in the land of, in the land of Babylon, after King Hezekiah exposed you know, all the treasuries and all the, the, the gold and the silvers in the house of God, to the king of uh, Babylon. The Lord spoke prophetically through uh, Jeremiah. He said, because you have opened my house and the treasures in my house to the enemies, I will lead the children of Israel into captivity in Babylon for 70 years. Read that scriptures, Jeremiah 29. For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. God said, a set time, I will come. I will deliver you. You won't know why. You won't know how. But I will do it. Because I know you are going through stuff. My thought towards you, they are the thought of peace and not of evil. To give you a hope and a future. The bend in the road in your life is not the end of the road. <laughs> What you think will outlast you. The Lord asked me to tell you, you will outlast it. Yeah. So I will face it to you. I read Daniel chapter 10, verse 1. When it was 70, 70 years, according to the word of God. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel. I believe Daniel was born in Babylon. He was a child of the slave in Babylon. Jeremiah was one of those led in captivity into Babylon. 
But Daniel was able to discern the time. That it was the appointed time for God to set them free. It was the set time. And in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. And the thing was true. But the time appointed was long. But God has said it shall no longer be prolonged. Amen. You are not saying amen to that. Amen. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. Daniel, a man that understood time, knew that the time that God told the children of Israel that he was going to bring them out of captivity was that time. That man launched into prayer. He began to seek the face of God. He said, what you have said, you must bring it to pass. You are not a man to lie. Neither are you the son of man to repent. You have said that you will lift us out. It is time for you to do your work. The psalmist prayed, oh God, it is time for you to walk. For they have made void thy law. So it is time for you to rise. Arise, O Lord. Let my enemies be scattered. Arise, O Lord. Let my enemies be scattered. Arise, O Lord. Let my enemies be scattered. O Lord. O Lord. Arise. It is time for thee to walk, O oh God. For the enemies have made void thy law. They have said what you told me is a lie. They have said I should not believe in it anymore. But you have said in your word the days shall no longer be prolonged. That proverb shall cease. Because the time that you have said is at hand. I want you to pray. Before you pray, if you have not given your life to Christ and you are here listening to this message, the best thing that can happen to you in order for you to be a beneficiary of this prophetic prayer and this prophetic word is to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are listening to this message at home, you have not made Jesus Christ your Lord and personal Savior. I give you the opportunity today to change your spiritual status, to change your ways, to repent of your sins and come to Jesus. He's waiting with open arms to receive you. It is on this ground that you can win the battle of your life. I don't know, the Lord is ministering to me. The Lord said that there's somebody here. You are fighting a kind of battle. I don't know what that battle is, but the Lord says you are fighting that battle on the wrong ground. You are fighting the right battle on the wrong ground. I don't know who that individual is. You, cannot, you can never win such a battle. And I don't know if you understand what the Lord is saying. If you are compromising your faith, you are compromising the standard of the word of God and you are fighting a battle. You are fighting that battle on the wrong ground. Number one. Number two. If you are fighting with a, another child of God, you are fighting your battle on the wrong ground. You can never win that battle. I don't know who that individual is. But I want you to pray. Lord, over my life concerning your promises today, arise. Pray this prayer after me. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Over your covenant promises. Upon my life. Arise. And fight my battle. Pray in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. I provoke you to pray as if you understand the implications and the meaning of that prayer. God has spoken. His word cannot return back unto him void. Over your covenant promises, O God of heaven, arise on my behalf. Arise on my behalf. 
Arise on my behalf. Fight the battle of my life, oh God. I have no power of my own. I have no might of my own. I lean on you. I depend on you. I hold on to you. To fight the battle of my life. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Every generational battle. Every inherited battle. That I have been fighting before now. Because you said. Here comes my appointed time. Here comes my set time. I ask oh God. That you rise up in your might. Rise up in your power. Fight my battle oh God. According to your word. Lift me up oh God. From the minimum. To the maximum. Before my enemies oh God. Set my tables. Anoint my, uh, my head. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Rima Santa Yeke Rike Bosotoria. Rende Bosoto Rike Boshende Ke Rike Bosotoria. In Jesus mighty name we pray. We prayed a prayer here early this morning. Some of us were not here. I have just two more prayer points and I will close. The time appointed, the time set was now in the days of Daniel. But he saw things were being prolonged. And when he engaged in spiritual warfare, he caught the revelation of the strong man of the land called the prince of Persia, who said, even though God has spoken, we will keep the children of Israel bound in Babylon. He began to contend. Serious spiritual warfare. You don't win spiritual battle with like a desiqua attitude. You don't win spiritual battle with grammar. Your vocabulary cannot win spiritual battle. It is a provocation of your spirit. When it gets to a point in your life and you say, is it that I win this battle or I die? I will not live another day in defeat. I will not live another day crying. I will not live another day in reproach. I will, it was the decision that Anna made. The battle that Anna was fighting, if you go and read that scriptures very well, the Bible says it was even God that shut up his womb, her womb. That was a serious battle. It was God that shut up her womb. It was not enemies. But if she prevailed with God, as soon as Zion traveled, listen to me, there is a prevailing in traveling. If you cannot travel, you will be kept on status quo. It will be happening around you. You won't witness it. But you get to a point and you pray some dangerous prayers that the priest got to where Hannah was praying. He said, I have gone to several mountains to pray. I have prayed different kinds of prayer. I have prayed in my understanding. I have prayed in tongue. I have prayed bowing down. I have prayed kneeling down. I have prayed prostrating. I have prayed with my head up. I have seen up. He said, I have never seen this kind of prayer before. He said, this woman must be drunk. That was a desperate woman. Go and read the scriptures very well. You will see those that received attention to their situation. They were desperados. Are those who refused to settle for the status quo. <laughs> Blind Bartimaeus, he was crying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. They said, we're in a church. Don't yell like that. Your yelling is affecting my eardrum. I have here, I have here problem. Please, please keep it low, keep it low, keep it low. You are just yelling and yelling, yelling. That wolf, that man was not going to listen. He made up his mind. This said time, this appointed time, that Jesus is here. Ah! The Bible says he cried aloud the more. 
when you pray dangerous prayer, you offend some people. You offend religious people in the church. Those who are used to the normal, you offend them. That man cried out, said, this is my set time. I have seen Jesus. Even though I couldn't, I could not see Jesus physically with his eyes. You may not see him physically with your eyes. That was the state of blood. But he said, I heard of him. They spoke his word in my ears. I heard his word like torrents of rain. I don't want to miss this set time. If I meet this set time, that might be it for me in life. I'm telling you, when you miss your set time, you might as well sign up for eternal failure. But when you key into your time, when you key into your time, when you key into your time, heaven, heaven pays attention to the minutest detail over your destiny. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Every strong man, every strong man, who is the Lord? I know not the Lord. Neither will I allow the children of Israel to go. They have been, I inherited them. The children of Israel to were properties. Properties. I inherited them from my father and great grandfather. I have to keep that inheritance. But that man said, not a hoof. Not a hoof that belongs to the Israelites will remain in Egypt this night. He said, this night, this night, this night, as the day is breaking, the victory of the Israelites are breaking. I will not allow anything to be left in Egypt anymore. Pray this prayer after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, that is too little. Father, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus. Every family strong man. Every community strong man. Every inherited strong man. Over my life and destiny. Catch fire. Strong man, 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 strong man. Every strong man in my family catch fire to them and that's the name of Jesus. strong man say how shall you plunder the goose of a strong man or else you first of all bind the strong man then you can plunder his goods yes take authority over a over family strong man that strong man in the family that strong man that strong spirit that strong force in the family say no you must join the queue you must join the queue you were initiated into it you must join the line you can't jump over the queue jump stay on the queue ah in Jesus mighty name we pray I stand upon the authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stretch forth your hands. I have come today with a prophetic mantle to place a demand over the forces contending with God's promises and plan and time over your life. God has spoken. 
His word cannot return back unto him void. When God created the heavens and the earth, the Bible says that there was darkness upon the face of the earth. And the earth was without form and void. Then, the spirit of God began to hover over the face of the earth. I cursed the spirit of God. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. As you incubated upon the face of the earth, at creation incubate over these people incubate over these people spirit of the living God the executive arm of the trinity I provoke you over the lives of this one to rise up to rise up to rise up over, 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 over every head here present. Everyone under the sound of my voice, let the spirit of the living God begin to hover over you. And now, I decree every strong man in your family, over your life, Every strong man that they have handed you over to, he that told, today, break your yoke in Jesus' name. There are a lot of handing over taking place in the realm of the spirit unknown to physical eyes. Every strong man that they have handed you over to, he that told, Today, cut fire! Like Moses to Pharaoh, let my people go. Let my people go. Let my people go. Everything that has kept you low, let my people go. In the name of Jesus! As you get out of this sanctuary today with heavenly seal with the ink of the blood of Jesus Christ I stamp your liberty. Let no man trouble me now for I bear upon my body the mark of the Lord. I put a mark on you today. The Lord told Cain, he said, I will put a mark on you that no one that sees you will be able to kill you. I use the blood of Jesus to put a mark upon you today. You are no longer a ram dedicated for sacrifice in your family. Some people, they are goats, dedicated sacrifice in a family. I say, whatever that has tied you down hitherto, I break the yoke. I break the yoke. This same week you are entering into you will see a mark of victory over your life and destiny. Begin to thank God for answered prayers. Hallelujah.